Welcome to Slay and Excel Dragons video number 24. Hey, these are the videos that accompany this book. We're still in chapter 5 and we are going to cover an exciting topic defined names. Now defined names are awesome when you're using the same range over and over. We'll cover a bunch of topics for defined names and we'll look at the max, min, and count off functions. Let's go over and look at our workbook. We're in the Excel is Fun Start video. Excel is Fun Start workbook, which of course you can download by clicking on the link below the video. And we're on the functions, the sheet functions too. Now, here's our situation. We're going to do a bunch of calculating in the next two videos. We're going to find the maximum value, the min, we're going to count words, and we're going to do sum ifs, count ifs, and average if, doing analysis with two criteria. And every single formula is going to use the same range over and over again. Sometimes we'll use the sales column, sometimes we'll use the region, sometimes we'll use the product. So we have to look at the defined name feature. All right, let's just start right off the bat. I want to name this column. Now, right now, if I were to click in uh, that cell, click here, and control shift down arrow to highlight that whole range, that range, now this formula wouldn't work, but that's a range. And we could use it inside the max, the min, the sum functions, for example. But I want to substitute for this, so I don't have to keep coming over and highlighting this. And that's what define names do. So I'm going to click Escape. First, you've got to highlight. I'm going to hot click in the first cell and Control Shift Down Arrow. As soon as you have a range highlighted, we can use the Name Box. If you hover your cursor, you can see the screen tip says Name Box. Click in the uh, cell in the name box. That's just the first cell in our range. As soon as it's highlighted, type a name. Now I'm going to name this something smart, like this is the sales column, so I'm going to type it, type sales. Oh, there's the cursor flashing. As soon as you see it flashing, it's saying, hey, hit enter, which I just did, and that officially registers that name. Now, if I click somewhere else, I want to test it, so I'm going to go up to the name box, click the drop down, and there it is. I'm going to point to sales. Those are um, our tables we created earlier in the, uh, our book. But there it is. There's our first define name. Oh, so I've tested it. It jumps right to it and highlights it. By the way, that's a great trick to use names to highlight certain sections and just jump. It's, it's, you could use this as a navigation trick. But we don't want to use it as a navigation trick. We want to use it inside of a function. Now, I'm going to do the function for finding the largest value, which is max. Now, normally at this point, I go over and highlight it, but I'm just going to type the letter S. Now, there's our drop down. We've seen lots of functions, and that's the icon for function, but that's a new icon. This is the icon for defined name. Now, we have seen one other type of icon, too, for a table, our Excel table feature. But there it is. And as soon as you have it highlighted, just like with our functions, you can hit Tab. And there it is. You could see it's blue. You could see an outline blue over here, which means it's C in the right range. And I'm going to hit Control Enter. Now, I'm not going to type that closed parentheses, because if you have a simple function with just a, uh, a few arguments, you don't have to put it in. Control Enter. You can notice up here that it, it puts it in for us. It's that saves one click. All right. Now let's go do and go do min equals min. Min finds the smallest value. I'm going to type in S and then tab. So see, once you use it to define name, and you know the keyboard shortcuts, you know S A or whatever it is, tab. It is fast. There's another benefit also. Sometimes when we highlight a range, we accidentally exclude a couple cells, and we didn't mean to. If you're sure that your defined name is correct, then every time you use it, it will be correct. Now, let's go look at where these names get stored. Now, you could go up to Formulas and Name Manager. Now, I use a lot of names, and you can see the keyboard shortcut in the screen tip is Control F3, so I'm going to use that Control F3. Oh, there's a bunch of things. Well, th that table right there, those are tables we created earlier in the book. These print ranges also get stored. That's when we did our page setup much earlier in the book. There's our sales name. I'm going to click on it. We can click Edit, and you can edit your name. Now, one uh, trick to make sure it's highlighting the right range is you can click this, and it collapses it, and you can look and see. 
And sure enough, you can see the dancing ants are dancing all around. I'm going to uncollapse that. You can change the name or you can change the range. Sometimes uh, the range expands and you need to edit it. Notice if we edit it here, all of these functions will update because the functions are looking at that name right there. I'm going to click OK. Now what I want to do is delete it. I'm going to delete it. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Click OK. Close. Now this is the type of error. There's a couple situations when you see name. Let's hit F2. Earlier in the class, we saw how to put text into formulas. Well, if you put a word that's not a defined name or a table name or something like that, you're going to get the name error. The other situation you'll see a name error is if you type out a function name incorrectly. In essence, anytime there's a word in a formula that's not a defined name, a table name, or a function name, it's going to give you a name error. Now, instead of, now I want to show you. Um, a trick to create a lot of names all at one time. Now, we're going to analyze this data set over and over and over using all sorts of columns. Now, certainly it's fast to click Control Shift Down Arrow and click right here. I'm going to click Escape, but there's a much better way. Earlier in this book, we talked about properly set up data sets. That means field names at the top in the first row. They are the top of each column, and records are in rows. Because that is a common structure for raw data, there is an automatic feature that can create names. <coughs> Excuse me. Such a great feature. I'm getting all choked up. But here we go. I'm going to highlight. Actually, we can click in any cell and control asterisk. That highlights the whole table. As long as you have the field names at the top and all the data below, you can simply use create names from selection. But I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, Control Shift F3. Absolutely one of my favorite keyboard shortcuts in the world. It's being polite. It's saying, hey, I think that there's some names in the top rows, but sometimes people have names in the columns too. We don't, so we want to uncheck them. And just like that, it will instantly create these eight named columns. I'm going to click OK. You can come over here and verify. Cost of goods sold, boom, there it is. Sales, there it is. Not only that, but you can see over here that now that we've reestablished our name, I'm going to hit F2, those formulas are working just fine. Now, we're going to look at one more function here, count a. Uh. Now, count a uh counts non-blank cells. People that have words in a com column that want to count them often use count a. Uh. And so as long as there's no blanks, blanks here, um, it'll count how many records there are, or words in our case. Count a. Uh. Now, I'm not going to use the sales. I want to use the region. So I'm going to type r. Notice the drop down. Here we have a bunch of functions. It's not uh, till all the way down here. So I'm going to type an e and then g. Once I get r, e, g, I see my uh, name tag, my define name tag, and I can hit tab. The point here is if you're using these fields over and over again, you get the habit of just going REG tab. So it looks like in the region column, if there are uh, there's 105 words, and if there are no blanks, we just counted how many records there are. Now, when we come back in our next video, we will talk extensively about two counting, summing, and averaging with two criteria. We'll do AND criteria and OR criteria. And we will use our defined names uh, many times. All right, see you next video.